Hi, I'm Francesco. In today's video, we will check how to perform image recognition using Python, OpenCV, OpenAI Clip, a pre-built model, and Postgres PG Vector. The use case is simple. You go to one event and someone takes a huge number of pictures. And you would like to know in which pictures you are basically in. But you don't want to scroll all the pictures in the catalog. You want to have a way to, for example, upload one of your pictures and find all the pictures where your image or your face is. So what we will do is we will use a set of tools to basically calculate some information out of the pictures. And then we will store this information in the Postgres database using the PG Vector extension. But how does a database and PG Vector assist us in order to find faces? We need to do one step back and we need to talk about embeddings. What is an embedding? An embedding is a vector representation of an information. If, for example, we want to store the information I love parks, we can create one column for I, one for love, one for parks, and store the information I love parks by assigning a one to each of the columns. If then another phrase like I love croissants comes in, we can store the same information alongside with I love parks by adding a column like croissants. And in the case of I love parks, the one will be only in I love and parks column. In the case of I love croissants, we will have the ones in I love croissants. These are the embeddings. This is a vector representation of our information. What is the problem with this approach? If we keep encoding like this, we will need to create a new column for each of the new features, for each new word we encounter in our set of phrases. And this is not really scalable. So encodings is a way to represent the same information, but in a more compressed way. So let's take this one step further, because we talk about phrases, but we really want to check images. The very basic of an image is a series of codes, which are basically showcasing the color of a pixel. If we take the similar approach to what we said about phrases to images, we understand that we can somehow basically narrow down the information that is contained in an image in a series of values in a vector, in an embedding. So what we will have to do now, it's a series of steps. Because of course, we, can, we can't just calculate the embeddings on a photo and expect that to match a picture of a person. What we will have to do is a series of steps where we take a picture, we somehow find the faces in the picture and store the faces in a separate folder. Then we calculate the embeddings on those pictures and we store them in Postgres PG Vector in a table in Postgres which allow us to store these embeddings as an array. Then what we will do is we will take a my photo or a colleague photo that we want to use as reference, calculate the embedding on that photo, and then using the PG Vector function, understand which of the pictures in my database is closer to the picture that we just uploaded, that we just used for reference. So we will use PG Vector in order to both store the data as an array in Postgres, but also using the distance feature in order to find which, which faces in the array, in the database of pictures, are similar to the face that I just uploaded with my reference picture. So let's try to do that. Okay, we are here in the event console where you can see that just 10 minutes ago I created an instance of Postgres called PG PG Vector. If I click on it, 
I have the service URI that I can copy to clipboard. I can go to my terminal and I can type psql and paste it and I will connect to PG Vector. Next, what I can do, uh, I can go to the GitHub repository containing all the material that you can reuse in order to test this kind of tutorial. And you can find the URL of the material in the comments below. And what you can open is the dbsettings.sql. This will allow you to copy the uh, commands that we will need to execute in Postgres. First of all, we will need to create the extension vector, which is PG vector. So let's do it. And next, we will create a table pictures containing the picture name and then the embeddings, which is a vector of size 768. Okay. So I created my table, which is empty as of now. Okay, so the table is empty. So what we can do now is start populating the table. So if you go to the uh, repository again, you will find a file name, a file called main.ipynb. This is a Python notebook that allows you to do step by step all the steps needed in order to recreate the face detection scenario. So as we said before, we have a picture which is contained in the test image. We will use this picture to detect the faces in the picture. Then we will calculate the embeddings of the picture. And then we will store the embedding in Postgres using PG Vector. We will use my colleague Tib's picture, Slack picture, in order to calculate the embedding on the reference picture and try to find all the other pictures in my database that matches, that look like tips using the vector similarity. Okay, let's start our journey. First of all, we install the requirements. In my case, I believe I almost have everything already there. The second step is to perform some, uh, face recognition. So we need from the big image that is shown here, to detect all the faces. What we can do is we can use a pre-trained model. It's a pre-trained OpenAI model that allows us to basically calculate the embeddings locally. So nothing here goes to the internet. What I, it's doing is not actually calculating the embeddings, but even more, it's detecting the faces. So from my test image face, it's going to find all the faces included in it. And I'm using a hair cascade frontal face default method to find the faces, which will have some parameters that I can tune. For example, the minimum size of the picture. I don't want to find faces which are less than 100 pixel times 100 pixel. And there are some other factors that I can tune in order to have more or less accuracy, more or less speed in the face detection. Once I find all the faces, what I'm doing is I'm creating, I'm basically cutting them from the main image and storing them in a stored face folder. Okay, let's try to execute this step. It executed almost immediately. And now in my stored faces, I have all the faces that we could find in the picture, included something that doesn't really look like a face. It's normal because the model is not correct, but it's working offline, so we take it. Okay, the next step is calculating the embeddings on top of those faces. For this one, what in this step, what we will do is both calculate the embeddings and also push the data to PG Vector. We need to go back to our console and copy again the service URI. Once we copy that, it we can paste in the service URI placeholder. And what the embeddings calculation does is basically use the package EM EMG embeddings to calculate the embeddings and then pushing the embeddings to Postgres. So if we execute this step, we will see a couple of wordings, but then the four images, the four faces, or well, the five faces that we have in stored faces 
well, we will calculate the embeddings on them and push them to the Postgres database. If we want to check on the Postgres side, if we do select star from pictures, we have now the picture name alongside the embeddings. Okay, so we have our kind of databases of faces. The next step is to go back to our, um, our notebook and to calculate the embedding on the reference picture. As I said, I'm using this ooh, solo image, the Slack image from my colleague Tips. What I'm doing with the image is basically calculate the embeddings. So the embedding is now calculated. The final step is to use PG vector difference function in order to find which is the photo being closer to the reference image. In this case, what I'm doing is taking the embeddings, creating a string representation, and then selecting from the table pictures in the database, only the first row ordered by how close is the embedding that I'm passing as a parameter to the list of embeddings that I have in Postgres. If I run this statement, the output is exactly what we expected. It's Tibbs picture from the original photo. If we get from here, Tibbs is here, you can see also the name, and in the result, Tibbs photo is there. What we saw in the last 10 minutes is how to perform similarity search on top of images using a set of tools including Python, OpenCV, a pre-trained OpenAI model, and PG Vector from Postgres. If you think about the span of this type of application, it's really huge because you can perform similarity search on top of images, on top of text, on top of audio, on top of any kind of data, as long as you can create embeddings on top of them. If you want to know more, there is a link in the description that brings you to the blog post, which contains a lot more details about the use case that we presented today and about the technology behind it. If you like this video, please click on subscribe on the Ivan YouTube channel to be notified when a new video pops up. I believe it's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon from Francesco.